What's going on, everyone? It's your boy, Ernest Dove, resident prospect hugger of Mets Twitter. And for some crazy reason, I'm actually making a video about why it's time for the Mets to trade some actual prospects. I've been saying it since basically the trade deadline when it did start to happen. Uh, continue to uh, rest in peace to our trade that thankfully, I guess it was great that we got Winker, but we lost uh, my Tyler Stewart. But you know what? This is it, ladies and gentlemen. It's time. It's time to start trading some prospects. The Mets, we already know about some of the uh, the things with maybe Crochet or some of the uh, the major names out there. And is it time to finally start making some trades? And this has got to be it. I want to start talking about some of my reasoning behind why it's seriously and legitimately time to start trading prospects because I, depth is always very exciting. It's always good to have depth. Some of the best organizations, they have depth. But here's the thing. The Mets can have depth even by making some trades uh, during this offseason to acquire some starters. I want to start with the bats. I mean, let's talk about the bats. Some of my thoughts is that, again, some of the top 30-ish ranked players are all going to find themselves eligible or able to play at the AAA slash MLB slash taxi squad level. So when you got so many guys all at the same position, what are you going to do here? Uh, I have some ways to even explain to myself what to do with some of the players. You have the uh, trifecta of uh, Vientos, Mauricio, and Beatty. And it seems like in the last year or two, I've kept changing my minds and how to rank those three if you were considering them all third basemen. And then you know what? Hey, lo and behold, uh, these things figure themselves out. The old cliche. And it ended up happening. Mauricio missed the entire year. And then during a baby slump, Vientos just magic just went all through the postseason. So if you want to even just go you know, solely based off the postseason, you would think Mark Vientos – deserves to at least break camp as a member of a core uh, player now at this point in 2025 in the lineup. What goes from there, we don't know. I can't even get into the idea of defensive you know, abilities with him because the offseason's not over yet. We don't know the status of Pete Alonso. I can't just move Mark Vientos right now in my head until you know things are proven otherwise. If I wanted to say, should we trade someone off the top of my head, it would probably be Brett Beatty. He would be the guy to trade right now. Maybe consider him the the Dom Smith of the Mets offseason right now, or in, a, in a, another kind of way, J.D. Davis. The Dom Smith, J.D. Davis route. When is it too soon? When is it not soon enough to trade a guy based on value? Maybe it seemed like maybe a year or two before Dom Smith kind of started to lower off, they might have been able to trade him. Same for J.D. Davis when he had that bit of a hot season and they kept having him, and then things kind of fell apart ever since. Are we running into that with Brett Beatty? Is he going to show up in like an Oakland A's uniform and be an all-star? Maybe. Uh, but going without that, again, value, value, value. If you, have, if you have to really pencil pen in Mark Vientos at third base now going into camp, Mauricio, he's kind of, he's been hurt for the entire year. You would think no matter what he does, you could probably keep him the entire season just to play AAA and see how he even goes. Maybe even try out a corner outfield position again along with second base or third base. You might as well try it out another year and figure things out with Mauricio. So maybe it is time to trade Brett Beatty before things get better or worse. Uh, some of the other guys, again, I, they're at different stages of their lives of sorts in player development with the Mets. Luis Angel Acuna got that taste, got really hot, did really well as a spark plug for a couple of weeks. I know at the end of the season or postseason, even Stearns was kind of like kind of praising him, but not outright saying, oh, he should have played more. I wanted him in the World Series. Uh, it looks like things might have slowed and tempered a little bit, even within the organization. But you can't help but like the run that Louis, Louis Angel Acuna went on. But here we are going into 2025. You still have at the moment, I mean, unless things change after this recording, you still have Jeff McNeil on the roster. Again, technically, they've been kind of sprinkling in Brett Beatty at the end of the season at second base. Uh, so that was a pretty interesting uh, kind of situation there. So when you have a guy like Beatty, then you have an Acuna, then you have Jet Williams, who, again, for arguably is considered the number one prospect still in the organization. 
And if it was up to me, obviously there's Lindor. So you're talking about second base or center field, which is the one. Uh, we've seen some of the stats. The errors are there with Jet Williams in the middle infield. There really are kind of no errors in the outfield in the minors, uh, which could be seen as a good or a bad sign. Again, let me go back to Dom Smith, who was the OAA-like leader for a little bit when he was in left field briefly for the Mets. Again, you get to the, the balls you get to. Uh, maybe you don't, you don't drop any. That's a good sign. But what do you do with Acuna and Jet? Do you make a decision right now? If it was up to me, you could even go into a breaking camp with someone like an Acuna in a utility role if you want to go that route. Do you think he needs to play every day or not? Jet Williams, you'd have to think he has to play every day. But again, for trading purposes, if you're the Mets organization, again, the Dom and JD thing all over again, the old I can do to. At what point do you got to use the value and trade guys when they're at their highest slash something projectability? It could be interesting to see where they go. Even kind of lower down, like not even considering the rankings, but even the Mets have a player like Wyatt Young, who's still been, uh, he started off slow a little bit this past season, and then he basically hit like he normally does. I believe he ended the season hitting about 280 at both the double A and the triple A level. He's going to get on base. I consider Wyatt Young more of the Luis Guillorme 2.0. So you do have a guy like that also as well who can fill in at probably second, short, third. Uh, he's your utility guy as well in AAA level. And again, not really speaking trade value. I don't know, obviously, what kind of trade value that Wyatt Young would have, even if you packaged him with other guys. What kind of value would you have there? But then he may have value as a guy – you have as the emergency backup backup if you trade someone like an Acuna and then also a baby. Those are some of the guys and some of the thoughts in my head. I don't know if you guys feel the same, but I mean, that's some of the trades or the possibilities I'm thinking about. Uh, as far as the pitching, I've been saying it for weeks now online. Uh, it was kind of a rough season for a lot of the top 30 ranked pitching, uh, pitching prospects for the Mets. And if you look at some of the most recent ones, hey, shout out Joe DeMeo has a new uh, top 10 out. And you see some of the guys are no longer even in the top 10. I'm not even sure how many would even keep bubbling into the top 20 based on how some of the younger guys were performing at the end of last season. So now as you head into winter, you head into 2025, what do you do with all the pitchers that are AAA slash MLB ready? Do you try to keep all of them? Uh, I started, I've been asking around, I've been talking to a Mets source who kind of gave me a political answer. So unfortunately, I apologize. I can't give a straight, huge uh, report on this, but my source in the Mets organization, on the one hand, they did say, hey, we understand that because of the amount of holes that we need to fill during this off season, we're going to explore both free agency and trade. Now, I was trying to imply that meant they're going to start trading guys because it's just not even realistic to just sign everyone. But then at the other time, at the other breath, the source also said, we also want to maintain depth in the organization. So I could understand the both sides of it. I'm the king of being both sides of everything. But for the Mets organization, getting more into specific players, we have Jose Buto. Is he going to be a starter or a reliever? We've seen him shine as a reliever. We've seen the non-benefits to him as a reliever. If he pitches even only one inning, he may not be able to pitch again for one or two days or more, at least how it went during the 2024 season. Is he going to be able to improve that? Can he be a back-to-back -back pitcher going forward if it was one inning at a time? Can he continue to be that Seth Lugo Mets role and always pitch two innings every couple of days? I mean, it, we see the benefits in it, but depending on how the offseason goes, what if Buto is a starter? Or either way, he's in the organization on the 26th man. David Peterson, you would like to think he pulled the Vientos on the pitching side. You got to supplant him and pen into the rotation in 2025. Now is when you get to the other guys. Uh, we've seen some of the uh, transactions start to occur. Joey Lucchese is no longer with the organization. I believe uh, your Danny Ventura from the prospect level has been let go. I believe the Mets did re-sign back as a minor league free agent, Yoander Suarez, which I was super excited about. Because I can see Yoander Suarez being on that level of guys for the depth guys as next man up. Even in the rotation, he could be that next guy you see in 2025. Now you get into the top prospects. Blade Tidwell, 
As far as I know, they still like Blade Tidwell as a pitcher. He has some of the filthiest stuff among the six, seven arms that I was hyping all last season. Question is, Blade Tidwell, uh, Hamill, and it, uh, what do we do with these guys? Mike Vassell. These are three guys that on one occasion or another were all ranked in the Mets top 10. And then they started fluttering in AAA, and now the rankings are changing. But from the Mets' perspective and from my perspective, all three of them, you just have them repeat AAA and just kind of be around. I like the idea of the depth for that. But then, now I just mentioned it on the Alcuna level, back to the Dom and JD level, when you start having guys re-go, 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 and they get more and more time in, within AAA and the minors repeating the level, different things can happen. Do they skyrocket and then it looks great on the Mets? Do they have another bad season and it maybe gets worse or other negative things happen now in 2025 and now you get no value out of them whatsoever? Uh, it's going to be a certain call that I think the Mets need to be ready to make. And again, when you really get into depth, you see teams like the Dodgers and other organizations, they're going to probably end up trying to bring in some veterans as well to be that starting pitcher depth. Some kind of guy who's kind of quasi still around. He's healthy enough. Maybe he can't. Maybe he's willing to sign to be in the Syracuse if he doesn't break camp making the roster and he clears waivers. You can still go with guys like that. But again, do you keep all of the Vassal, Hamill, Tidwell, even Yoan or Suarez? Uh, Jonah Tong now is, you would at least think Jonah Tong is going to be at the double A level and he's one of the top prospects. My opinion, I still have him the number one prospect uh, pitching wise. Crazy or not, maybe I have him one and one A with uh, Sprout. But again, there's the other guy, Sprout. So you have maybe Tong, one of the top pitching prospects in the organization in double A. You got Sprout, who's triple A eligible. Then you got Hamill, Tidwell, Vassal, Yoanna Suarez. Uh, even some of the other guys that have been kind of unsung heroes, on uh, non-ranked guys who've been getting some love, even through the Arizona Fall League right now, some of these guys may be able to earn a shot in the AAA Syracuse uh, rotation. So is it time to pick one of these guys? And the Mets Twitter, we're going to be mad either way. You know I'm going to be sad about it. They're probably going to get crazy anytime some guy gets traded and ends up in their rotation day one and does kind of okay. But it's still my opinion it might be time to start moving from some of these guys. These are some of the names that I have. And again, it's up to you guys. You tell me what you think. Are these the right names? Who do you keep? Who do you want to get rid of? Do you want to keep Acuna and Jet Williams and see what happens? One bats first, one bats ninth. We have a future speed demon kind of situation. Uh, do you do you figure out something with Brett Beatty? Do you magically have him in corner outfield and then his bat shines with all the somethings that he's been going through finally settles in? Do you wait on Mauricio for like half a season and he's a star again in waiting with the power while you still always worry about the on-base percentage? Uh, I just, overall, guys, ladies, it's time. It's time to start trading some prospects. The Mets have a lot of holes to fill. Regardless of the Cohen money, you can't just sign everybody as free agents. And we've seen Stearns work some of his magic at times with the bullpen. Uh, putting that trust in Manaya and Severino on the one-year deals of sorts. Is he going to try to pull that rabbit out of his hat again with one-year guys? Does he get the Corbin Burns? I mean, does he make the trade for a guy who's under control for a couple of seasons? That's when you got to start moving these guys. Uh, and again, you guys let me know. I want to try to make more videos as things start to happen. Hopefully I can get more source reports rather than uh, my guys basically telling me more political answers at this point. I'm going to keep trying, but you guys got to keep uh, following. Thank you so much.